Now, is it Pet Smart or Pet Smart? One of the most puzzling questions of our time. They used to emphasize that it's Pet Smart, and now they're going by Pet Smart, and I realize no matter how much I try to break up the words, it just sounds like I'm saying the same thing over and over. The colors in the logo separated after the word pet, implying that you say it that way. But upon further inspection, the ball bouncing makes it look suspiciously like an apostrophe, which would imply that you say it the other way. They used to capitalize every letter except for the S, which I don't even know what to make of that. I guess it makes it even more ambiguous. Oh, they know what they're doing. This is my nomination for the most cleverly named store in existence. I can't even think of anything else that would even come close. PetSmart is huge in their industry. They practically originated the concept of the huge retail pet store chain. They opened the first one over 30 years ago and quickly became the largest pet store in existence and have still been expanding ever since. They have over 1,600 stores in the US, Canada, and Puerto Rico. They used to have them in the UK too but that ended over 20 years ago. They weren't doing too well, so they decided to narrow their focus on the North American market. They're number 47 on Forbes' list of the largest private companies in America, and then if you look a little further down that exact same list, you'll find Petco at number 100. That's the second largest pet store in the country, and is there even anything else that comes close to these two? I can't even name another pet store. Those are the two I know. I think we can say that by most measures, PetSmart is twice as big. In terms of revenue, it's 8 billion compared to 4.2 billion. They have 55,000 employees compared to Petco's 25,000. They have right around the same number of locations, but on average, PetSmart stores are considerably bigger. And over these years, I've had a hard time telling them apart. I'm guessing you have too. They're pretty similar. Historically, if I had to briefly state the difference between the two, I'd say PetSmart is like the pet section of your grocery store, but expanded, whereas Petco is like the expanded version version of your local pet store. I know that sounds confusing, but if you think about it a minute, I think it makes sense. Here, PetSmart is a little cheaper, but offers less variety. And both of these stores exploded in popularity right around the same time, and for very similar reasons. Let me set the scene. It's the 1980s, Reagan is president and Max Headroom is going strong, and if you want to buy something for your pet, you're likely going to the supermarket, or possibly to a small independent pet store, but nine times out of ten, it was the supermarket. The idea of a large chain of stores dedicated solely to pet supplies was unheard of. Those regional pet stores always had tremendous trouble competing with supermarkets. We can see why. Being smaller, it's hard to compete with them in terms of price, and instead of making a special trip to the pet store, it's generally more convenient just to wander over to that section of the supermarket. I suppose if you wanted something specific or obscure, it'd be worth it, but people were generally just fine with whatever basic stuff they could find during their weekly trip to the supermarket. But there was a shift happening in the way that people cared for their pets. This entire industry is way bigger today than it was 30 or 40 years ago. And that's due to the fact that people started caring much more about their pets. I mean, today there's strollers for your cat and treadmills for your dog and the feathered tether bird harness so you can take your bird for a walk. I, I don't know, but I watch the show Shark Tank and I feel like at least once every couple of weeks they're presenting something that's extravagant for your pet. Some might say it's gotten a little out of hand, but in the 1980s is when we started to see this shift. It was much tamer in the beginning, of course. Instead of people just feeding their pets whatever they seemed to like the most, they were now starting to put more care into the decision, comparing the ingredients and trying to figure out the healthiest option. To fill that demand, companies started coming out with these healthier, premium lines of pet foods. And now with this flood of new options available, it wasn't practical for supermarkets to carry every one of them. It's almost like we now needed a specialty store. This might sound kind of strange, but for these reasons, in the late 80s, pet stores were seen as a rapidly growing business. So there was this married couple named Jim and Janice Doherty, and in 1986, they saw this trend happening, and instead of just capitalizing on it by opening a local pet store, they saw a bigger opportunity. They got a few investors together, raised about a million dollars, and used it to open the first 
Pet Food Warehouse. Now, their goal was essentially to provide reason for customers to go to their store instead of the traditional pet store or the supermarkets. Are you familiar with Costco? I made an entire video about them, but they sell their stuff in a warehouse, cutting out the middleman and passing the savings on to the customer. They force customers to buy in large quantities at discount prices, which means high volumes but low margins. It's all in the other video. Think of Pet Food Warehouse as Costco for pets, which I think is a concept that may work even better this way. When you buy that 42 pack of Famous Amos chocolate chip cookies from Costco, I'm willing to bet you're just sick of eating them well before you finish all 42 packs. Then you find yourself eating them when you don't want them. I mean, you can't let it go to waste. It's a whole thing. But with dog food, they never get tired of it. They love that stuff. So with pets eating mostly the same thing every day, it makes perfect sense to buy it in quantities basically as big as you can carry. One other way that they separated themselves from all other competition that I always thought was pretty cool. They allowed pets in the stores. I can still remember the first time I saw a dog in a pet smart. I was pretty young, but I was confused and excited and it took me a while to process, which I think proves just how unique that is. Plus, it attracts more customers and helps show that they care about your pet. When you combine all these factors, you can see why they were a success. Identifying a shifting trend and taking advantage of it in a way that no one else was. Within three years, they had seven locations throughout the Southwest and were generating sales of 16 million a year. The company knew that that they had something special on their hands here, and they felt the pressure to quickly take things to the next level before competitors started copying them and creeping in. In 1989, they brought in a new leader that they felt can help lead them through this expansion, and from here, they made a bunch of important changes. They made an effort to help the stores look more friendly to customers, which involved dropping the warehouse aesthetic and making it look more traditional, things like brightening the lights and installing tile floors. They also expanded their product offerings. Instead of just dog food, they started selling toys and bowls and cages and all that other stuff you see in there. My favorite change that they made during this time, well, pet food warehouse wasn't fitting anymore. They now sold much more than pet food and were trying to distance themselves from that warehouse image, so they changed it to PetSmart. I'll say it again, it's a great name. All the changes worked because they gave customers further motivation to visit their stores. This company grew so quickly, they weren't even around for five years before becoming the biggest pet store in existence. Existence. Their sales and store locations were almost doubling every year. In 1993, they made an initial public offering, which means they sold a bunch of stock on the market for the first time, which brought in millions of dollars that, I'm sure you're not surprised to hear, went toward expansion. And then every so often, another company would emerge that appeared to be a threat. Someone else who was also trying to take advantage of this growing market and using similar tactics. In many of these cases, PetSmart would just buy them and transform those locations into into their own. Now, Pet Co. had a very different start. They date back to the 1960s, and for a long time, they were one of those local pet stores that struggled to compete against the supermarkets. But just like PetSmart, when the industry started growing, they recognized a great opportunity. They followed that same pattern, opening new locations throughout the late 80s and early 90s, and trusting that the demand would be there and continue to grow. In 1994, one year after PetSmart, they had their public office offering that allowed them to take their expansion into high gear. The traditional pet co-locations were pretty small, only about 3,500 square feet. So during this time, they were working on closing those and opening new and improved locations that were more like 15,000 square feet. Here's a chart that compares the revenue of the two chains over this time. You can see how the two followed a very similar path, but also how PetSmart has maintained that sales lead. The ownership of Petco has really bounced around over the years. As I said, in 1994, they became publicly owned for the first time. Then in 2000, some private equity firms bought it for $600 million. But then two years later, they put it back on the market. But then four years after that, they bought it back. And this time the price was $1.7 billion. And then finally, in 2015, they sold it to a different private equity firm for $4.6 billion. That's where they are today. Now, for PetSmart, it's been a little more straightforward. It's remained on the stock market since that initial offering in 1993 until 2015 when they were also bought by a private equity firm. Now, I'd say that they both successfully took advantage of this growing market, but it's been 25, 30 years now. New competitors have emerged, notably 
Amazon, and other online retailers. Amazon introduced their own brand of pet food last year and have been selling more pet products than ever before. It's reduced the number of customers coming into the stores, and the two have reacted to it pretty differently. PetSmart is trying to take on Amazon at their own game, with a huge emphasis on internet sales. In 2017, they acquired Chewy.com. They have all these pet products online, and at the time, that was the largest ever e-commerce deal. It cost them $3.35 billion, which by the way was funded using a lot of debt, and combine that with the leverage buyout that took place in 2015, PetSmart is dealing with a lot of debt. Luckily it's not due for a few years, but it'd sure be nice if they could make enough money to pay it off before then. They're sort of stuck in this strange balance, where their stores remain profitable, but sales are going down, whereas for Chewy, their sales are doing well, but they struggle to be profitable. Now, for Petco, they're smaller, so it's more difficult to compete with Amazon, and plus they'd have to compete with Chewy and all the efforts over at PetSmart. Their strategy is to stay out of it, and I think it's smart. They're doubling down on the services they offer, vet services and training courses and grooming. They're even trying out this new store called Pet Coach that has a heavy emphasis on all of these services. I think if these two stores continue following these respective pads, they'll finally be different enough to where we won't confuse the two anymore. That'd be nice. Let me know in the comments, as a customer, what would you say are the biggest differences between these stores? And I mean besides the fact that one has such a cooler name than the other, because that's obvious. Also, what do you think of their new business plans? Personally, I would predict Petco to have a brighter future, but PetSmart is putting up a fight. And finally, which do you like better and why? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.